welcome to this YouTube channel that offers mathematics from grade 8 to grade 12. I was a QP leader at Mbanga Secondary in grade 9, 2020. I managed to pass with flying colors in mathematics, which is 80. I got 80 in mathematics with the help of Mr. Fury. So all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and, and wait for more videos. Um, my name is Given Kabungo. I wrote my grade 9 20, uh, last year, 2020. I passed my grade 9 with motivating results. I got 92 in mathematics with the help of Mr. Piri and Mr. Mwono. With the help of these teachers, you can also pass your grade 9 and even grade 4 if you work hard. And with the, with the help of Mr. Piri and Mr. Mwono, you can, you can get even 100% in mathematics. So subscribe to this channel, you will be well, you you get wonderful results in mathematics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, my name is Jerry Kibi. I was also attending to this lesson in Niagara. Uh, in 2020, I got the 20% in my final examination in my time. And I would also like to advise you to either subscribe to this channel or at least just come to this school and start learning here. There's a very good lesson and very good teachers. I'd like to advise you to subscribe if you're in other countries. Such you can't miss out on the good teachers that are here. Okay. All right. So, like yeah, you have heard these are our videos that we have tried to drill you for two years and they are back. All right. And I think they are a testimony to what we are able to, to offer. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mondo, in case you have uh, something, tell them what are they supposed to do to this channel? Subscribe. Alright, so those are our girls and the, the boy there. Okay, so we continue now with our, our core business. That is to present the lessons. And in this lesson, we want to see how we can deal with this topic, which we are calling computers and calculators. But again, I must mention that, you see, when we are dealing with calculators, I uh, don't think we will uh, we'll take time to present on how we are supposed to use a calculator. If you have been following our videos, at whatever point where you need to apply a calculator, we have been showing you on how we are supposed to use it. Okay, so we can't dwell much on this one because we have been uh, helping you as to how you can use your calculator. But the part that you must concentrate on is the, the part uh, for computers. But again, even this one, we are interested in specific concepts. What are these concepts? Flowcharts and the pseudo codes. Now, these two concepts, that is the flowcharts and pseudo codes, are methods that are used to implement an algorithm. Alright? An algorithm. So we use the pseudo codes and uh, just to implement what we call an algorithm. Now, what is an algorithm? An algorithm is simply a series, a series of steps that you need to undertake in order for you to execute or to manipulate a, a, a given task. Alright? In order for you to be able to execute a given task, you need to take some steps. Alright? through what we are calling an algorithm. Now, in doing that, or in order for you to do that, you will apply these two methods. Okay? You agree with me that uh, when you look at these Terra machines, for you to get money, for you to withdraw money from a Terra machine, right? There, there, are, there are some steps that you need to satisfy before you eventually get the money. Maybe the first step could be insert your pin. Alright, that is the first step. Maybe the second step will, uh, will be maybe in the um, indicator, uh, insert your card first. Alright, that's the first step maybe. Then thereafter you go to maybe inputting your password. Alright, then the other step that you are going to follow. Now, when you look at all those steps that you need to take, those were, design, were designed by a programmer. So, that is a similar approach that you want to take, but here we will try by all means to be basic. Alright? Our explanation is basic because of the level. Okay? Because of the level. So we want to see how we can use these projects and pseudocodes to solve mathematical problems. 
Alright? How we can use these two concepts to solve mathematical problems. Okay? Now, again, I must mention to you, dear colleagues, that for you to be able to use these two concepts correctly, effectively and efficiently, you need to have a solid understanding of mathematical formulae. Others would say, would say mathematical formula. Because that is what is expected of you to do. In most cases, we ask you to say, can you design or can you uh, draw a flowchart that could be used to find the area of a nine right angle triangle? So in that case, you need to understand uh, how to find the area of a nine right angle triangle before you draw a flow chart. So it's very imperative that um, you have a very good understanding of, uh, uh, of mathematical formulae. That's why in most cases, when we are presenting, we tend to uh, make the word a bit, not until our learners are exposed to different aspects of mathematics. Okay, but nevertheless, you can still be able to manipulate. Okay, now let's get to flow charts. What is a flow chart? All right? We are saying a flow chart is a diagram made up of various symbols such as boxes, diamonds, ovals, etc. etc. So a flow chart is a diagram that is made up of various symbols. Okay? Different symbols. Now we are saying a flow chart depicts the logical steps to carry related to each other. In other words, a flow chart shows how each step is related to the other. Alright. Now, in order for us to understand and to appreciate this thing fully, we need to know or understand what we call flowchart symbols. Okay? So these are some of the flowchart symbols that you need to appreciate. The first one is what we are calling an oval. Okay? It is an e oval. What we are, this is the, how we draw it, we are saying it's an oval. This oval is used to start, instead of using start, you can say begin, and or to stop or end uh, a program, all right, or a task. So each time we are starting or ending a program, you always see, you see an oval, all right. Then the next symbol is this one, which we are calling a program, all right. What is the essence of this program used for inputting? Instead of inputting, you can say entering. Alright? You enter the things that you want to use to process a, a problem. Alright? So it's used for inputting, entering, and or outputting. Instead of outputting, you can say display or print operations. Okay? After that, you deal with a rectangle, what we call a processor. This one, it is used to manipulate data. If you want to process data, you are going to use this data. Then the next one, the next symbol is what we call a diamond. A diamond or what we call a decision box. By decision, again, it means you are going to make uh, logical comparisons. Okay? So, it is a decision box that has got two, uh, one, uh, a point of entry and one point of uh, outlet. Okay? So, you, you, you start from this point. Um, so, maybe you can have here, maybe uh, this arrow going this side. Here is yes. So, uh, yes or no. In here, in this box, we are saying we apply this box when we want to make a decision. For example, you are going to say, is radius less than me zero? What do you expect? It is either yes or no, isn't it? So if it is yes, then you must, you must explain what should be done. If it is no, you must explain as well what should be done there in this direction. So if you want to make a decision box, you are going to use that. If I want to make a decision, you are going to use that symbol. Alright? Then there are other important uh, things that we need to look at. And uh, in this case, uh, we are trying to talk about these uh, arrows, project arrows. Okay? 
This will just show you the direction of a flow. How each part of a flow chart or each symbol is related to the other. Without this, then it doesn't become a flow chart, a complete flow chart. Okay. So these are some of the symbols that we need to use when dealing with a flow chart. Now, what is a pseudo code? We are saying a pseudo code is an, uh, an artificial or informal language that helps programmers, the people that program, all right? So that helps programmers develop algorithms. If I say it by an algorithm, we are talking about a series of steps that have to be performed before you execute a problem or a task. All right, so we are saying it's an artificial informal language that helps programmers develop algorithms. Pseudocodes may be in English or any other spoken language or indeed a combination of both um, computer language and the spoken language. So in most cases, this could be written in a language such as English, okay, or a combination of both. Alright, so with me, here is an example which I want us to, to attempt together. Alright, so I say write a simple program. I'm emphasizing it's a simple program. It may not necessarily be a pseudo code, but just a simple program. And the corresponding flow chart that computes the area A of a rectangle of a rectangle with bridges. B and length L. Okay, so you're going to say answers. Alright? Now, here, look, we want to find the area of a rectangle. So, what should come in your mind is how do I find the area of a rectangle? Area of a rectangle is given by L times what? B. Length by British. That's what we need to, to find the area, all right? So now, how do we do our simple program? So the first thing, you always, like what you said here, you always uh, start by saying, okay, you start your program, all right? You start your program. Then, thereafter, you must input the things that you need in order for you to find the area. What do we need to find the area? I need length and breadth. So those things should be entered. So you are going to say enter length and the breadth. Alright? Others do say enter length, then they say enter breadth. Okay? But even in this line, I think it's too okay. So you say enter length and D, you enter with this. So, once these, these things have been entered, what should happen? Then you must calculate the area. How are you going to calculate it? You must define. So you are going to say area is equal to L. Now, remember I deal with the computer here. So you, you may not write multiplic this multiplication style. You put an austerity. Alright? So, that is how you are going to, to get the area there. Then what should happen? Uh, maybe you can say area is L by B. Then, after it has calculated, what should happen? It has to give you, right? You can say display. Display area. Or A. Okay? Then what happens? It has to stop. The moment you have the area, then that has to stop. So this is done. Simple. That's why I say calling it a simple program. Okay, this is a simple program, and that is done. Okay? Then you can try to draw a responding flow chart here. I don't want to erase that site. Okay. 
here. Right? So we deal with the front end. So if you have this one, how do you draw a front end? The first thing you are seeing starts. So you are going to put an oval here. Right? Then you write say starts. Then what should be the next thing? Enter. What do we use when entering? We use a parallelogram. Okay? So that's what we are going to use. So So we are going to say enter. What are we entering? The length and the breadth. Okay, so there must be an arrow here. Okay. Then what's the next step? We define how the area should be found. So at this stage, you are processing the area. That should calculate. What are we going to use? We will use the electron wave processor. Okay? So, So we are going to say display. Instead of uh, saying display, you could say output or print area. So it has to give you the area there. Then what is the last thing? You stop. Okay, so you are going to say stop here. So we are going to say stop. It means it's done. That's how you're going to draw a very basic flow chart. I hope you've learned some more skills on how to get started. Alright? So if you want the symbols, they are there. And how to draw the, the flow chart. Okay, so that's where we end for this presentation. I'm going to give you an exercise. Okay, I'm going to give you an exercise. Okay, so this is our exercise. We are saying write a simple program and the corresponding flow chart, which computes the curved surface area of a cone. Okay? Now here I've given you a hint that the area, the curved surface area of a cone here, we need to emphasize to the curve D surface area of a cone is by R and L. Okay. Alright? So I attempt this one. Thank you so much.